What's up, Internet World? We're the News 19 Nerds. I'm Michael. I am Lore. You're who? Lore. Okay. You don't remember Lore? Are you a we, big Star we, Trek fan? We, we've already discussed this. Oh, we have? I'm not, I'm not the biggest Star Trek oh, fan. Oh, okay. I just, I was watching other stuff. Okay. Um, I am Leroy. This is the big Star Trek fan. I am the not big Star Trek fan. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm probably more Star Wars than Star Trek. I'm, not not saying that I can't like both. I just probably yeah, gravitated more to Star Wars. I have, I, I, um, so I am a Star Trek fan, mm -hmm. um, but I did. Now my problem was I did not watch Enterprise. I didn't like it. That's um, when Scott Bakula. Yeah. Okay. I don't like prequels. Okay. I don't like telling me what come, came before. Like I don't. I didn't care about that. Which is funny because I really like Discovery. I was like, wait a minute, you really enjoy Discovery? I, I really do like Discovery, and I'd never finished Voyager. Okay. Like I, I, I dropped, I dropped off Voyager, came back towards the end, because I just felt like. What's the one with Captain Janeway? That's Voyager. Voyager. Okay. I came back at the end and was like, mm, okay, um, I wasn't on board. Okay. My favorite is Deep Space Nine. That's with the black guy. Yes. See, I know, the, I know the captains. <laughs> I do. It's weird, right? I haven't seen the show. I just know the captains. I love it. That's the black guy, right? No. The, I don't know his name. Oh, I just know the captains. Cisco. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> see, we, we see how this is going to go. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but we're talking about the most recent Star Trek Correct. adaptation, Star Trek Picard. Uh, not adaptation. The, the, the most recent tale in the yeah. Star Trek universe. Yes. yes, correct. Star Trek Picard. Yep. This is after Picard decides to leave uh, the Federation. This is a couple of years. He's an admiral, mm -hmm. I believe. And this, is, this follows Nemesis. With uh, his Tom clone. Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy, his clone. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, man. I know so much about Star Trek with somebody who doesn't watch it. <laughs> I mean, just little bits and pieces yeah. of stuff I remember. But, um, yeah, so we are going to do this... Uh, episodically. Yeah, episodically. We're going to do a review for each episode. Well, this is the uh, first episode. We will get to episode two and three. We know three drops this week. Yeah. So we're we're doing them as they come out. We got we got to play some catch up, but yeah. eventually we'll be we'll be date and day and date when stuff comes out. Yep. Uh, so se season premiere, series premiere, episode one, season one. We know there's a season two already been greenlit. Yep. Overall, general non spoiler thoughts. I enjoyed it. And again, now so let's do. This is somebody who doesn't know Star Trek that well, just knows basic mm -hmm. stuff. I know some of the people who were on the Enterprise. Yeah. You know, I know uh, Gordy, Jordy. Sorry. sorry. Gordy is, is my brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So I know Jordy, um, I know Worf, I know Data, I know uh, Riker. Will Riker. Yes. Yeah. Um, number two. Yes. So I, I know these people. Um, well, I've, I've seen number, episodes. Number one, the executive officer. Yeah, his number two. He's, he's, he's number, yeah. um, I know these people. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, this was cool to see kind of what's going on with Picard. I always thought he was a cool guy. And I remember uh, listening to a podcast that he did. And the, the true Star Trek fans already know this, and I'm sure they'll clarify more, but just when Next Generation started, he really wasn't on board with he it. He was not. Because he was a, a trained thespian, you know, on the stage. Mm -hmm. But I guess after that first season, he kind of got on board and fell in love with it and really jugged Embraced with the, the character. Yeah, yeah. jugged with the crew and whatnot. Which I think is a cool story of just kind of bringing in these hard actors, actors, and bringing, you know, you can find good material, even stuff that might be considered campy or, mm -hmm. you know, sci-fi yeah. or whatever. Um I think it looks great. It's like, man, this show got a budget. Stuff looks really nice. Um, I think the action scenes were cool. I like the different aliens that we saw. Um, and one thing that I that I always admired Star Trek for more than Star Wars, I always thought Star Trek was a little Star Trek was a little more heady mm -hmm. in terms of like political stuff, and I, I felt like it dealt with bigger themes than Star Wars did to it's, me. Well, that's they, by design. By, yeah, by design. I think Star Wars was more a, a commentary on fascism and these little scrappy, this little scrappy group going up against an empire. It mm -hmm. didn't take much for you to understand who were the good guys and who were the bad guys. Yeah. One guy was dressed in black choking subordinates. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you're probably not, you're not the best. I can say that. We're not hanging out. I don't do morally ambiguous, you know, I mean, yeah. just choking people out, just... Yeah. yeah. Um, and where Star Trek, when it first came out, and not to give a, a history lesson, but Star Trek was born out of the Cold War. The Klingons were uh, were a stand-in for the Russians and this enemy that we had, that we, our mortal enemy at the time, and how we have these ideals and morals that we take from this 
utopian society, and it comes up against this race where we're like, ooh, but also how those more rays we have, how they work, the, the prime directive, when you're up against adversity. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between the two, where Star Wars was more space opera. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, swashbuckling heroes and, yeah. you know, weird aliens who were, you know. Yeah. That's the difference. So is it, if you weren't reviewing it, would you keep watching it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's got my attention. Okay. Um, so first up, we had, yeah, we had talked about, Thank to, to you know a little behind the scenes, yeah. we were finally able to secure a CBS All Access account. Because we weren't going to go back. We we weren't paying for it. <laughs> we, we just let's be honest. We, um, well, we the problem was we felt like we worked for a CBS affiliate. Yeah. We were like we're reviewing CBS programming. Yeah. Help us out. <laughs> so people have finally decided to help us out. Yeah. So now we will be reviewing. shout out to the people behind the scenes. Yeah, for making that happen for us. But uh, yeah, um, I I did enjoy the show, but again, it wasn't. And we kind of talked about this before. There's no, there hasn't been a show that's like, oh, I'm definitely going to actually get this, a show on CBS that made me think, I have to get this service. And Not that's, yet. and I'm wondering because they, because their big claim to fame, CBS All Access, is Star Trek, mm -hmm. and I toyed with the idea because I like Discovery. Picard, Picard is the tipping point. I was like, would I pay for this? And as I'm watching it now, I'm like, maybe. Mm -hmm. If it, what, maybe because. With the with the app, there's so many other things you get with it. So I was like, mm -hmm. it's it's it. Picard is tipping me over. I really like Discovery, but it wasn't enough to make me get that service. Because once once you take Star Trek out of the equation, I don't care about anything else. Right. Um, right. I really enjoyed the show. I I'll admit, I got emotional. I didn't cry, but I felt some kind of way seeing Jean Luc Picard back. Okay. Seeing Data. Um, seeing these different characters in the show. Spoilers? He's in the trailer. But the trailer for like the whole season? Yeah. I'm saying like you see these characters come back. Okay. See like when I saw the okay. trailer, when I saw Seven of Nine, when I saw Will Riker. Gotcha. Like, I, I saw the trailer. I Just seeing like, all that stuff. Okay. I see it and so I was like, oh, this is cool. And I watched the trailer again and I watched the show and I was like, oh. It was like, you know what it's like? You ever find a pair of pants that you have worn in a while and they fit? And they fit just the way they're supposed to. <laughs> and you're like, why have I not, not been wearing these all along? Mm -hmm. This fits like a glove. Right. It's like, oh, I love this. Okay. That's watching that first episode for me as a Star Trek fan. And I'm not going to say I'm a huge fan. Mm -hmm. I will say that I, hmm, I'm a right below huge. I'm not, I haven't dressed up as a Trekkie yet. Um, but I do have a lot of Star Trek stuff at home. Um, we went to San Diego Comic-Con one year. We got to meet uh, Brian Fuller. We got to meet some real Trekkies. We got to meet, we had a great time there. And we got to meet some people who just really energized my love for Star Trek all over again. Yeah. Uh, we got to meet William Shatner. We got to meet Jerry Ryan, Michael Dorn, um, uh, Scott Bakula. Mm -hmm. The only person we didn't get was... Was uh, Brett Br Spiner Brett Spiner. We didn't get him. We didn't, we didn't get to talk to him. And we didn't get somebody else. But we got to talk to uh, Gene Roddenberry's son. Yeah. We got to talk to uh, a couple of showrunners for Discovery. So meeting them re-energized my love of Star Trek. And this just made, it, it, it just multiplied that love. Seeing this episode and seeing the different characters, how they interacted. So Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we could kind of go to spoilers now. Yeah. We, we, we like the show. Um, again, we didn't pay for it. <laughs> I'm going to be up front. Make sure we get all the FCC stuff or whatever. Yeah. Uh, all right, so spoiler territory. Um, Jean-Luc is, is running a, 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 a vineyard. So if you watch uh, Next Generation, he mm -hmm. always had, a, his family always had a vineyard. Mm -hmm. He always talks about having a vineyard and going back and sitting down and like go, doing wine and having that. Um, I'm trying to think of who this woman was that I saw on the show. Here she is. Um, I'm really kind of hoping she's in more of the show, but I don't, I don't know if she can be. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed was seeing him on the vineyard, retired, doing mm -hmm. his thing. That yeah. was the one thing he always talked about, going home. And I thought that was cool. Um, I really enjoyed that. That just, that warm feeling. Mm -hmm. So, um, one thing 
that Star Wars, see, I'm already messing up, that Star Trek does uh, better than a lot of science fiction shows. But I mean, it's, all, it's kind of a, a science fiction trope in terms of dealing with racism, how aliens can represent different races and whatever. And Star Trek does that better than anything else. We, we see, we, we kind of get a, a feeling of what uh, drove Picard away yeah. from the Federation in terms of his mission. So you watched Next Generation? Yeah. You watched all of it? You remember yeah. it? It's, so the ending, does that go with this? Or, no. they, or is this just a retcon? So you got to remember, So for, for those of you who hadn't watched the show, the show ended and had a great ending. Mm -hmm. The three movies that came afterward continued the adventures, okay. the got voyages. It. So did you watch Nemesis? Uh, no, nah, I saw like this, the trailer. So this that. directly impacts, this show is directly impacted by Nemesis, which okay. amazed me how deep into the, that's what, it's funny I mentioned lore, but this show directly is directly affected by Nemesis. So to catch you, for those of you, Nemesis, Romulus has a supernova. Mm -hmm. Romulus is destroyed. Picard wants to help save the Romulans. Right. Which is, tries, di tries directly back into Nemesis. Okay. Starfleet is like, let them die. Yeah, this is, <laughs> which, which is, goes against their prime directive, right? It, to a certain extent, which is funny because if you go back, so if you've been watching Star Trek, remember Undiscovered Country. Remember Kirk and the Klingons, let them die. Mm -hmm. When Kronos was going, was, was going to have an issue, Starfleet saved them. Starfleet worked with, with the Federation, I mean, for the Federation worked with the Klingon Empire mm -hmm. and said, we're going to help save the Klingons. When there were factions on both sides who were like, Dude, let them, like, yeah. F them. They, right. they let them burn because they were mortal enemies. If you remember, there was a faction within the Enterprise and on that Klingon war, Warbird, because that was the uh, undiscovered country, is the one that had Kim Cattrall in it. Okay. She was the, the, the Spock's underling, uh, and she helped saying that they had too many emotions, all this other stuff. So that's a vast difference from what they did, Starfleet did in Undiscovered Country. Okay. Fast forward a couple of years later to what they did with Romulus and okay. saying, nah. Right, right. <laughs> but, um, but besides, even with that, what they were trying to do, Picard still was like, let's do it. Let's do it. And he, and he had some backing. He had some support. Right. But then synth or synthetics. synthetics. Where every time they kept they kept saying synths, it made me think of Mass Effect because I was thinking of the synths synth and, the, and the geth or whatever. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, so the the synthetics, which Data is one, yeah, uh, went rogue. Not Data, but Not people Data. like Data went rogue. If you watch, so in Nemesis, Data sacrificed himself to save Picard. Mm -hmm. So there's a scene in Nemesis where you're like, okay, Data, Data's love of Picard and his understanding of what it means to be human and realizing I am the only one saves Picard, kind of like in a Spock saved. Uh, Kirk kind of way mm -hmm. save Picard Picard lives but Data doesn't and it's one of those things where you're just like oh and that's the end of the franchise okay. the, the end of the movie franchise yeah. so a lot of people were like how can you tell this story without that crew and not without all these people yeah so we say all that to say that Picard left because he tried to get these Romulans off the Romulans and he succeeded a little some of them got off but there were casualties with, within Starfleet mm -hmm. for the people who got uh, who tried to rescue them and it, it kind of has a, you know, real world application of like uh, xenophobia. And immigration. Yeah, how, how it, you, it was, it, yeah. It, so Star Trek is always kind of like, you have these utopian ideals. Mm -hmm. And you have this thing where you say, okay, in a perfect world, we would uh, get rid of racism. We would, we'd be one planet unified. Mm -hmm. Well, it's true, but human nature is, or just nature you fear what you, the unknown. If you have an enemy who's been a thorn in your side uh -huh. for decades, uh -huh. maybe centuries, you may not reach out that hand, even in the form of all of your ideals, to help them. Yeah. Um, that's what we see in the beginning of this, because that woman who shows up, uh, the reporter, and who who plays uh, Francie on Alias. Yes. Yeah. She shows up and is like, as a reporter, she's going to talk about. He's, he thinks he's coming talking about this. Mm -hmm. And 
She blindsides him. She, blind, she, she tries to. She blindsides him. And she, yeah. she gets him upset uh, because she wants to talk about why you love Starfleet. And the thing that I loved about Picard was, Jean-Luc Picard, was the fact that he wasn't always a fighter. Mm -hmm. He would fight when provoked. But one of the things that I thought that I loved him for was, she said Romulan lives. And he said lives. lives. Yeah. And that's the thing that, I loved about Picard was the fact that he was always willing to say and do the right thing mm -hmm. regardless of how the politics of it is, regardless of what that meant for his command, what it meant for his career, all of those different things. Yeah. That's one of the things that I loved. And But you do see that there is a disconnect. Their humanity mm -hmm. is not allowing them to see these individuals who are suffering as people. Right. And you saw it borne out in this report, reporter, which it's sad to say there are people in our, our business who have an agenda. Mm -hmm. They have a... And Picard is a big name. Yeah. So... Uh, what other big things kind of popped up? So we see that he had two Romulans living on his estate. Mm -hmm. I guess they're kind of... Are they like caretakers for the, the, the company or for the house? Or? I think they're caretakers, but also I think... They some of they, they kind of help him too, maybe. To they help him, but that thing. I, also, it's a thing of they they feel indebted to him, mm -hmm. and they look at him as someone who, not as just a father figure, but more or less like you saved us and you stood with us when no one else would. And there's a bond there when you lose a home, mm -hmm. and this person has opened up their home. They're helping him take care of. His home, because I'm quite sure he's a little older, he can't do everything. Right. Because it seemed like he had a vast area, for yeah. sure. And yeah, and I, really, I, I, I liked the two characters who played the Romulans. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to figure out at first. I was like... Did you uh, think they were bad? No. Okay. I, did, I, I didn't think they were bad. I couldn't figure out if they were... At first, I thought... Because Romulans and Vulcans are cousins. At first, I was like, are they Vulcans or Romulans? And then I was like, okay, they're, they're, they're Romulans. Mm -hmm. So it took me a little second to figure it out. But we see them because they, they're very protective of him, remember? Yeah. Because when that woman showed up, they were like, we vetted her. We, we, you know, they looked out for the mm -hmm. estate. And yeah. they, they're, they're, it's, they're like a found family. Yeah. Um, so we got, we got those people that he likes. We also meet... Um, so it jumps to Deja. How do you Doge? I, they said her name, and I yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. She is Dosh. 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 Uh, she's chilling out with her boyfriend, who looks kind of like a he has like some type of scales or something on his face. I don't know. He's an alien. They didn't say what specifically what alien race he was. They didn't uh, have to because he wasn't there long. He, oh <laughs> man, poor dude. I was like, oh no, <laughs> they're hanging out. They're about to have a little fun, maybe. And then some people come in. They talk about their futures with people that age. She got accepted to the, the, right. the, the institute. The, the, the millennials say like, oh. they got the life ahead of them. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not both of y'all. <gasps> um, some people come in and like a, like a strike squad or a strike team come in. We're in all black. They kill the dude. They put something on her head. And they're talking about her. Yeah. And they say this really cool thing. She hasn't activated yet. Mm -hmm. That didn't mean anything to me. I was like, activated. I mean, it meant something like, oh, maybe there's something she remembers. But what it really means is she becomes a badass. Mm -hmm. And there, there's some really good Take choreography. Take no prisoners! Yeah, there, there's some really good choreography in this show. Yeah. And um, she takes them down. And she doesn't know what happened or what she can do. But something activates in her and she knows the name Picard for some reason. Um, one thing, I guess it start, it's the future. I don't really know how travel works in terms of time. So I don't know how long it took her to get from wherever she was to... You gotta remember, she can. They have teleporters, man. Right. I mean, yeah. I you know, I'm just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They have teleporters gotta, and shuttlecraft, and you know. Yeah. I'm quite sure it didn't take her long, and she is kind of a badass, so it probably wouldn't take her long to figure out how to get there quickly. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, she. She, she was in Boston. Yeah, she, she, was, she in, was in Boston. She was in Neo Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir, with your Red Sox. Fan. Red Sox. Go Red Star Sox. Trek. <laughs> Red Sox and Star Trek. All tied together. Um, Celtics. Future. So Future Celtics. Future yeah. Celtics. Uh, she meets Jean-Luc Picard. They she, are in... Uh, mm -hmm. They are... She goes to his she estate. She goes to his estate. For some reason, she says she knows him. 
And mm-hmm. Picard is like, I don't understand. Oh, wait. Is this before or after he looks up the painting? Remember the painting? So she shows up, and it was after the interview. Mm-hmm. And she and he's and she's like, I, I didn't see the interview. I, I had a feeling. Something told me to come to you. And so he's like, I don't know you. Let's figure this out. Mm-hmm. I, got a, I got a couple of rooms. Yeah. Me chill. Chill. So he does that. He gets up in the morning. Old girl's gone. Mm-hmm. So he goes to Starfleet trying to figure out what happened. Right. And so he sees, he had the dream about the painting. <clears throat> and he realizes there's something about her that, I'm, that, that we're tied. And he's trying to figure out what that is. So she bolts. Mm-hmm. He goes to his... To the archives or something. To, to his archives. Remember, that's his archives. Right. Because as I guess, I'm guessing as an admiral, he has some type of status. And he's able to save some of his Right, because I saw like the, the Batleth was there. Yep. Like all, a bunch mm-hmm. of probably people who know Star Trek. Like, I know this, this, yep. and this. And I was like, okay, I so like there's that. A lot, a cool so there, so he, he goes to his thing. And the, the thing that I thought that I, I, I really liked was, so as he goes, and the reason why I was looking her up, her name is Maya Eshet. Um, she plays Lamy in Night Flyers. Okay. So I really, I really had liked her, and I really hoped when I saw her, I was like, oh, like I was happy, but I was disappointed because I was like, oh, you're only gonna be in this episode. Because I saw her, and I was like, yes. Because she I, was like the AI thing or the, she, the user interface. And, and she's a user interface, which is funny because she played kind of the same role a little bit in Night Flyers, where she can, she was able to communicate with the ship through her cybernetics. Okay. And I was like, oh, cool. Mike's in the show. And then I was like, oh, you're just an AI to help me with the archives. So you're not going to be in a lot of episodes. I was really yeah. excited to see her. So go check out Night Flyers. It was a really good show. Um, unfortunately, didn't get a second season. So just enjoy it. Just enjoy That was the R.R. Martin show? Yeah, yeah. on Sci-Fi. Yeah. Um, it's on Netflix now. So okay. I liked it. Um, okay. There were a lot of great people on that show. Um, so he goes to the archives. He, he gets the, the painting. And... Uh, Maya's character, the, the uh, uh, AI interface, explains to her, no one has accessed this place. Uh-huh. There's only two of these paintings in existence. And, she, and he realizes who's in the painting. And realizes Data painted this years before. Uh-huh. And this woman who showed up is Data's daughter. Yes. Some way, somehow. Yeah. Because uh, the, 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 there are two copies of the painting, right? Yes. One here. One and in one France in, and one in the archives. Yeah. Um, which is crazy. You're like, how did that happen, kids? So Picard goes to see Alison Pill's character. Nope. Nope. Remember, he's at the archives. Mm-hmm. And Dodge, who's wherever she is, runs. And then shows up at the archives because she can track Picard. And she's uh-huh. like, I can track you. They can track you, too. Because remember, she left. Right. The vineyard because she was like, it's dangerous for me to be there. And Picard's mm-hmm. like, hey man, danger's my middle name, baby. Yeah, don't worry about this. He's like, I it's got okay. you. Yeah. Picard's like, I'm Gandalf, baby. <laughs> I'm Gandalf. I'm a space admiral. I Fair. got you. Yeah. I don't know what's going on, but we go figure it out. Yeah. Um, so another great another great fight scene pops off. Great choreography. Uh, she takes out everybody except for one person, and she gets. Disintegrated. The, the wonderful thing about that first episode was, I think, this is leaps and bounds above any other show when it comes to fighting. Because the one thing Star Trek has that I think a lot of shows don't have, and they choreographed it very well. When you're fighting a person in a Star Trek world, you can teleport. Mm-hmm. So when you teleport a person, you're not, like, the fact that, no, I don't think any human could have pulled off those moves because she was so quick, she could anticipate and figure out the energy signal mm-hmm. from a teleportation and take that person out as soon as they landed. As soon as they came in the frame, she was on them. And that takes a superior fighting ability, agility. So you're saying no. she's like Idris Elba and Hobbs and Shaw from Etienne being able to do whatever. Sir, don't you ever sell these Star Trek with that trash. Just say it. I, I'm just saying, Idris Elba had a similar Sir, ability. I, I, I will. Ooh. He had ooh. a similar ability. Ooh, um, man, baby, ooh. But, <laughs> but yeah, okay, so, yeah, she, she was badass until she wasn't. 
She, um, she, she dies. She dies. We go back, so we end up with Picard on, on the couch at home with his Romulan friends. I'm yeah. not gonna say what Michael called them. <laughs> They're nice people. Um, uh, yeah. And he's like, where's Dosh? And they're like, there was no one else on the roof. And they're trying to figure out what happened to him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, she came back. And they're like, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But they're like, she did now, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, is this when he goes, that's to, when he goes to, Okinawa. to Starfleet? He goes to Okinawa. Right. Because that's where, remember, Dosh was got a, uh, some kind of fellowship or scholarship. And that's when he meets Allison Pill. Yeah. The, the scientist woman mm -hmm. who's working on, I guess, Theoretic. the, yeah, the, theoretical applied stuff because her, her unit was working on synthetic stuff. Her, her unit was responsible. Her, the facility she was at was the actual facility those scents came from who did that, the dude did the deed. And then once that happened, they shut you down. Like, so y'all can just practice and pretend, but y'all yep. can't make stuff You can anymore. do it in theory. Right. And then they have their conversation. And she, she shows us a, a clone of Data. Mm -hmm. Which was what B B nine B, what was the clone called? B four. B four. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, shout out to Brent Spiner, by the way. Still looking. I mean, he looks older, but he still looks good as Data. But that was one of the things Data through Star Trek Next Generation, Data was always trying to do was he was always trying to duplicate what his creator had done with him, mm -hmm. and he was never able to get a copy as sophisticated as he was to it, it was always there were always inferior copies mm -hmm. now he did succeed in one but that's a whole nother that's that, that's another video we ain't we, we not going there okay <laughs> i'm not ready for that yet yeah uh yeah so some kind of way tv space magic he's able to make a daughter well the thing is we don't know if data is the one who made her. We know there's a scientist that mm -hmm. Hudson Pill mentions yeah. that after the scent and after they shut them down, he loses it and he disappears. Yeah. And so, remember the necklace that Dodge has, she asked... Two rings, right? Yes. Yeah. Picard asks, what is this? And she says, there's always pairs. And Picard's like, wait a minute, twins? And she's like, yes. Mm -hmm. And so we realize, we fast forward... There's another Dodge. There's, a, there's another Dodge, but she does not realize... Yeah, she hasn't been activated yet. Nope, and she's hanging out with guess who? Romulans. She's the Romulans, but the Romulans were also were they at the Borg ship? They were harvesting at Borg cube. Yeah, I was like whoa, this yeah. is layers on layers. Layers on layers, and so we also realized that the people in black were Romulans yes. who had attacked Picard and who had attacked Dosh. Yeah. So we're f so in the first episode we're figuring out that somehow. There are good Romulans and there are bad Romulans. Kind of like life. They're good people and bad people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this, this show's great. I, I'm definitely excited to see where episode two goes. Um, I want to see more of the people. Even though I didn't watch all the Star Trek shows, I'm familiar with them. So it would be cool just to see them come back to reprise their roles. Mm -hmm. Seven and Nine, Riker, and all those people. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I, what I, the one thing I think Star Trek fans... I don't want to say fans, but one thing I think we get we lose sight of sometimes is that in these universes, different people tell different stories, and that this can be for you, and you can and you can like it or not like it, but you don't have to trash it. I know a lot of people did not like Into the Darkness, mm -hmm. Star Trek Into the Dark. I didn't like it for the simple fact of don't BS me and call this guy John Harrison when he's really con. Um, that that was my big problem, but I yeah. really appreciated it in the fact of a lot of people were like, "That's not a Star Trek movie," and uh, I disagree. Just like this show is Star Trek, I believe that show is Star Trek because Starfleet and these ideals, the Prime Directive, were about being explorers, about mm -hmm. helping people, mm -hmm. and in this episode, we see those ideals were in conflict with what Starfleet was becoming, how they felt, and they're made up of people. People bring their own prejudices and things. And that's what Into the Darkness did as well. Into the Darkness was this idea that we hate the, hate the Klingons and we're willing to do whatever it takes to defend ourselves. That's why, oh boy, you know, um, Robocop made the Dreadnought. <laughs> he made the Robocop, Dreadnought yeah. for the, uh, the eventual war that was coming with the Klingons. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's a viable 
threat, but he advanced it because he couldn't let go of his hate mm -hmm. and sided with someone who embraced it but was a little like you they he went over he yeah he yeah. He, he went what he did they expected yeah. so i say that to say i'm enjoying this and i think the themes throughout all of these star trek shows and movies seems to be the same how do your ideals how are they really ideals or are they convenient for you when you are faced with adversity yeah will you would you will you how to pressure or when you mm -hmm. change your, your behavior once you're faced with a real situation, which is cool. Because that was what Picard did. He he was like, I'm not going to go along with this because what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. We are we are betraying the ideals. So that's why like when people complain about Star Trek Into the Darkness, I can understand you may not like the movie for on the premise that it sets up because Star Trek itself took years, decades to build up to Star Trek Wrath of Khan mm -hmm. to get to that point where Khan tries to kill the Enterprise, Spock saves, sacrifices himself, and you try to do that in that one in movie. One movie yeah. I, I get that, but I don't agree with the fact of it was a bad movie in the sense of it was too dark and that there was no hope because you saw in that movie Simon Pegg say, I'm not putting these photon torpedoes on my ship because I don't know what they are. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be explorers. We're not warriors we're not like let other people do that we're supposed to explore the alpha caution we're supposed to take mm -hmm. readings we're supposed to have fun doing this yeah i'm glad to see this show takes that same premise and give us a person who's not always about to fight but who is not going to shy away from it yeah. he's going to he's ricard don't got the problem <laughs> and i'm a, based on the uh that trailer that came out of what's coming up in the rest of the season mm -hmm. We see him kind of get his ragtag group of people. Mm -hmm. Man, this, this show just reminds me of Mass Effect in terms of Commander Shepard gathering your group to do whatever. But, I mean, you know, it's a trope for any, any type of sci-fi thing. But, anyway, it just looks cool to see his group of people going out to do something. The one thing I love about this is that it's not, that it, it's the pilot. But it's one of those pilots where it doesn't have to spoon feed you everything. Mm -hmm. It just starts. And you don't need everybody in the first episode. Yeah, you you get you get enough because the show's called Picard, so it's based on Picard. Mm -hmm. um, but you're getting, you're we're going to be introduced to these people as the show goes on. So we know it's two seasons; it's already being relit. So we don't know where Jerry Ryan shows up. Mm -hmm. We know we saw Data in the first episode, but we know certain people come back. We know he's extended an invite to Whoopi Goldberg. Go watch that video online. It's a great video of Patrick Stewart talking to Whoopi Goldberg, inviting her and the showrunners, wanting Whoopi Goldberg to come back on, reprising her role. <clears throat> we see um, Jonathan Franks in the trailer, Will Riker. We see all these different people, so you don't know when they're gonna show up. And that's great because it tells for a better story because it's it's you don't have to be like, this is this person. Yeah. Introduce. This is this person. Yeah. You can just tell a great serialized show. Mm -hmm. And this is very different from The Mandalorian where it was each episode was kind of self-contained. You could watch them or not watch them mm -hmm. and still get, you know, it was the adventure of the week. Yeah. Um, so we're in. Uh, that'll be it for this one. We will get... A, you will see a video of episode two eventually. Yeah. Soon. We don't know when, but it'll come. Hopefully within next week. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Because we, we still got to do two. We got to watch it. Yeah. Think about it. Um, <clears throat> I personally, again, I was emotional seeing this because I have, I really, I love Next Generation. My mom and aunt got me into Star Trek. They used to watch the original Star Trek, the original script Star Trek when it came out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Star Trek? Ugh. And they watched it and I was like, because I, my aunt was so smart and my mom was so smart, I was like, y'all watch Star Trek? Mm -hmm. And I started watching Star Trek. It was them who got me to watch Next Generation because I was not a fan. I was like, where's Kirk? Mm -hmm. Where's Spock? I really was on board. So when bald Jean-Luc Picard showed up, yeah. I was like, that's not my Star Trek. Right. And they got me to watch it. And so that's how I got into it. And then after I watched Next Generation, War shows up. I read the books. I was like, oh, I'm hooked. Mm -hmm. I'm all in. You done? Hey, man. Go watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Go, go watch Star Trek Deep Space Nine. That's the one with the black one. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think I said, did I say, did I say black one or black man? You said the black one. 
Alright. I stand by what I said. Uh, like, comment, subscribe for more insightful commentary like the black one here. Where you can find us. Find us here on YouTube. Also find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and WOTX.com. And we're out. Peace. Hey. Live long and prosper.